When you keep winning and winning, dominantly and comprehensively time and time again, there comes a point where you seem otherworldly. Well, speaking of that, who's the best ever? Your opponent can't look you in the eye. Your mere presence is just too much to overcome. They are your victims, not your opponents, because you got it. Best ever in MMA? Ever in MMA. It's hard to say. Somewhere along the way, you picked up that invulnerability power-up, and goddamn, does it feel so good. John Jones beat Alexander Gustafson without training. It's unbelievable. We basically didn't train. We've seen it a few times in the UFC. Jones, GSP, and Anderson Silva are obvious examples, but once upon a time, fighters such as Chris White and Ronda Rousey and Matt Hughes had that aura around them too. The sad thing is, it takes a 10 fight win streak at the very minimum to achieve this, and just one loss and it all goes poof like it never existed in the first place. But then you have Conor McGregor. I know you're laughing, this dude hasn't won a fight since Barack Obama was president. At one point, Connor did seem unbeatable, unfathomable even. Is there something about the phenomena of Conor McGregor that is unique? What is it that is happening? What has happened with him? What does he mean? What does he mean into UFC? He wasn't as well-rounded as GSP or as freakishly dominant as Jones or Habib, but the myths and legends surrounding the notorious Irishman were so powerful that even in losses, some of the mystique persisted. It took three fights. Three bad losses to crush the Conor McGregor aura. And let's start the story off with the first crack. While Aljamain Sterling and Sean O'Malley go to war this weekend, you can fight your own war with Conflict of Nations. Conflict of Nations is a free online player versus player strategy game that allows you to choose a real country and lead it to battle during World War III play with the same account on both PC and mobile, fight up to 128 other players in real time, use different units to build your army, tanks, jets, nuclear submarines, declare war to your neighbors or forge alliances with other players, choose your own strategy and engage in epic battles to take over the world. You get an exclusive gift, click on the link in the description to get 13,000 gold and one month of premium subscription for free. Offer is only available for 30 days so be quick. After knocking out the pound-for-pound -pound king, the 10-year unbeaten Jose Aldo in just 13 seconds, Conor McGregor did not just transcend MMA, but the whole world sport itself. Well, you just emphatically took out one of the greatest fighters of all time. You go into the UFC record books with the fastest knockout in UFC championship history. He was some sort of fighting paragon, reborn or some shit, and his left hand was a weapon of mass destruction, capable of knocking out heavyweights. Again, nobody can take that left hand shot. I, I call it the touch of death. You know, he's got that left hand. It's the touch mm -hmm. of death. After defeating Aldo, Conor set his sights on another Brazilian champion, the lightweight king Rafael dos Anjos. You fight me, it's a celebration. You beat you when you sign to fight gravity. me, it's a celebration. You ring back home, you ring your wife. Baby, we done it. We're rich, baby. Break out the red panties. He was a slower, sloppier version of Aldo, and McGregor was going to dust him inside one minute and become champ champ. This was set in stone. I believe I will dust half a L inside one minute. He is a slower, sloppier version of Aldo. He's a, he's like a bum version of Aldo, so. Unfortunately, RDA withdrew from the fights and Nate Diaz, on 10 days notice, stepped in as a late replacement. It was going to be no different. Diaz was a better boxer and more durable than RDA, but that left hand shot was just too much for a mortal. On Saturday night, I will eat his carcass in front of his little gazelle friends and they can do absolutely nothing. But in the main event of UFC 196, Nate endured the left hand just fine. He was bloodied up but rebounded in the second round, and that one-two combo woke up the MMA world, even if a little. Conor McGregor could not put Nate Diaz down, and he was the one who got rocked. Nate Diaz defeated the featherweight by submission, and you'd think that would be the end, but nah. Conor McGregor was still special. I've been on the end of many defeats in my, in my life and I've rose back, so I will not shy away from it. I will assess it and uh, come back. If you were cursed with an ungodly chin from the depths of hell, you could take the left hand shots. But there was only one Nate Diaz, anyone else, and Conor knocks them out in the first minute. Conor recovered well from the loss to Nate Diaz, and UFC 196 seemed like a stumble, not a downfall. Surprise, surprise! did what he said he was going to do and became double champion at UFC 205, outclassing the champion Eddie Alvarez. That looks good! Oh, that looks good, 
After securing double champ status, he boxed Floyd Mayweather and lost, but that didn't count. Well, I give him a hat off. Fair play to him. He, he's a composed man. If that was MMA, the ref wants to see our nose hanging off your face before he's even thinking of doing something like that. He's done it a little bit early, we thought. That was boxing. Smaller gloves, limited rule sets, and it was Floyd in the octagon. Conor McGregor was still the most dangerous striker in the history of the sport, and no one could take that left hand. Uh. And it didn't seem as absolute as before, but Conor was certainly capable of knocking out Habib Nurmagomedov. It didn't matter if he was the best wrestler in the division. He didn't have a Diaz level chin, and all the double champion needed was one shot that chicken jaw was going to crumble. I am going to truly, truly love putting a bad, bad beating on this little glass jaw rat. This was a crucial fight for McGregor, and he had to knock Habib out, or score a knockdown, or rock him at least. In the biggest fight in UFC history, Conor wasn't able to do any of that. He won the third round, but it was the Dagestani who knocked him down and hurt him. And in the fourth round, Habib submitted McGregor and retained his championship. Like they call him two-time world champion, like two weight classes, but today he tapped. This loss was a big blow because the third round was spent on the feet. And despite catching Habib a few times, that left hand failed Connor. And Habib just walked through his shots and slapped him, literally. But there was some solace. Even in this loss, Habib was a wrestler. He had exhausted McGregor in the first and second rounds. Against the pure striker, Connor is unbeatable. But this is a master uh, grappler and wrestler who was in his prime, has been wrestling bears since he was a kid in Russia, and he took on a master striker who, granted it seemed like, was uncomfortable in the pocket because he knew that he was going up against said prime wrestler. Best striker in history still. Yeah, maybe, just maybe. His power didn't translate well at 155. If you didn't have an iron chin, if you weren't the best boxer of this generation, if you weren't the best grappler in the UFC, Conor McGregor was simply superior to you. To be fair, Conor had lost to Habib and Floyd, both undefeated competitors, and one quick victory over Donald Cerrone was all it took to bring McGregor back on track. My name in history one more time. Dana White was ready to give him a title shot right there and then, but one more win would have sealed it. And out of all those available and eager to fight the megastar, the UFC handpicked Dustin Poirier, former interim champion, and someone Conor had defeated before. Conor McGregor seems so focused on coming back and doing something special and making us drop our jaws to the floor like he did so many times on his first run to becoming UFC double champion. UFC 257 was the last stop for Conor McGregor before his return to the title picture. And while Dustin had improved a lot since the first meeting, the loss at 145 still lingered. I said I'd knock him out in the first round, and I knocked him out in the first round. You can call me Mystic Mac because I predict these things. Dustin Poirier wasn't blessed with the titanium Diaz chin, and he wasn't the monstrous Dagestani grappler. McGregor was still the best striker, and no one could touch him. He's very dangerous. People talk about that left hand as being his main weapon, and it is his main weapon. Connor was the favorite to win the rematch, and he won the first round, even rocking his opponent. But Dustin shook it off and did not go out. His power was just not the same at 155, and once the fight progressed to the second round, the former champ champ appeared exhausted. The calf kicks from Dustin had taken a toll as well, but there was no way Connor McGregor was going to lose a striking match. That was simply impossible. Dustin accomplished the supposed impossible in the second round. Floyd and Habib had rocked Connor, but Poirier actually knocked him out. The sequence right here Connor McGregor winded, hurt, and stumbling against the cage, then getting sat down by a punch and put out with a right hook was the end of the show. And ironically enough, the guy who started this whole spectacle was the one who brought it to a brutal end. With the knockout loss to Dustin Poirier, Conor McGregor's aura was no more. And that's it. It's hard. You know, I don't know, I don't know where I'm at at the minute, to be honest. There was nothing to salvage at this point because Conor McGregor had got knocked out. And that was the point of no return. Conor and Dustin faced off in a trilogy fight soon after UFC 257. But as Dustin himself said, it just wasn't there anymore. Outboxed by Floyd Mayweather, smashed by Habib, and knocked out by Dustin Poirier, left Conor McGregor a regular fighter. 
He was dangerous for sure, but the mystique had unraveled slowly. And at UFC 257, it was all over. Very dangerous fighter sitting right here for sure, no doubt. But I see a man, the aura's not, not there anymore. Conor McGregor is easily the most charismatic personality in MMA history. And in addition to dealing with him and his elite skills, his opponents were up against the Irish fan base, the company they worked for, and the world itself. But one victory since 2016 over a battered Donald Cerrone is a tough sell, even for a mega star like Conor. He's got so much talent, so much ability. You can party and be a fucking madman. Or you could be jacked in your yacht, which is what you want. Yeah, but when you're, <laughs> when you're 40 and you got no other choice, do it then. It took several years, three brutal losses, and a lot of coping. But this was the end. And despite all the hyperbole and insanity, it was a good ride. I hope you enjoyed, but I gotta bounce. I'll catch y'all in the next one. Peace out. Thanks again to Conflict of Nations for sponsoring this video. Remember to click on the link in my description to claim your exclusive gift.